Welcome back. Well, the world's second tallest building is opening this spring in Shanghai, China. If you had to guess how many stories it was, what would it be? Oh man, I don't even know. A hundred? Well, close. I mean, if you thought at home 128 stories, you'd actually be right. Wow, 128. But what might surprise you is that this super tall building is also very green. It was built using sustainable design techniques. Marshall Strabela is the chief architect of the revolutionary Shanghai Tower, and he joins us now. Marshall, thank you so much. Oh, well, thanks for having me. This is quite wonderful. It, well, we were seeing 128 stories. That's kind of even hard to wrap your brain around. Well, I think the tallest building in Houston, is, I'm sorry, not Houston, Tucson, mm -hmm. is um, 330 feet. Yeah. The Shanghai Tower is six times that height. Wow. Wow. So that's it, to kind of like yeah. really grasp how tall this is. Yeah. That's incredible. Now, I'm curious, how did you get involved in this project? Um, I've been doing uh, tall buildings my whole career. For the last almost 30 years, we've designed the world's tallest building every year. They don't get built very often. Um, we did the Burj Khalifa, which is the world's tallest building, starting in 2003, and uh, we finished the working drawings in about 2006. It takes about 10 years to do one of these projects. So I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. And so when I said earlier about it being green, did yes. you go into this project knowing that you not only wanted it to be you know, one of the world's largest buildings, but be very green? Well, I think every building should be greener yeah. than the last building you do. And I think our firms, Philosophy is we try to use less energy each time we do a project. So the Shanghai Tower is designed as a thermos bottle. Did you ever have yeah. that as a kid? You know, it keeps your soup hot in the winter yeah. and your drinks cold in the summer. So it's a double skin building. It's the world's tallest double skin building. So it's really a glass bottle in another glass bottle. So it creates insulation. It's almost like having a jacket. When it's cold, you put the jacket on. Right. When it's hot, you take the jacket off. And is that actually some technology that we can use in any building? Um, it tends to work in more northern climates okay. when you have uh, a big swing in temperature from winter to summer. Okay. Uh, Tucson is pretty much the same year yes. round. This technology wouldn't work. Okay. You would use shading more in Tucson than you would use a double skin technology. Okay, good to know. So are there any other eco-friendly things about this building that maybe we could use in the um, future? It, it's kind of an odd thing to say. Uh, we try to do more with less, mm -hmm. which means we try to build our buildings with less material. And the shape of the building creates what's called disorganized vortex shedding, which is a fancy way for making it unaerodynamic. It, it takes the wind loads and reduces the wind loads the structure has to resist to the tune of $60 million. So we use less materials to build the building because of the shape of the building. The shape of the building is not only what it looks like, but why it functions and why it's green. We I'm really glad you said that because in looking at it, you know, my first thought is, well, I wonder why they decided to do that. It's really interesting looking, but there's a purpose behind exactly, the shape. Exactly. When you, you start, how many buildings are built in the world that are over 1,200 feet? Oh, boy. I wouldn't know. Uh, there's less than 15. Oh, really? There's more people in this studio today than there are buildings <laughs> built over 1,200 feet. That's a good way of putting okay, it. Okay, so it, it's something that's very rare, and it's very rare because it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So you have to come up with strategies to reduce the cost in order to get them built. And the twist of the building is, uh, it's like taking an airplane wing and twisting an airplane wing. The airplane won't fly. Right. Same thing with the building. We try to make uh, the wind not compound and move the building. So the shape of the building is very tied into that. But it's also an aesthetic response. Yeah. It's the look of the building. Mm -hmm. But what you can't do is you can't take away the twist without increasing the cost of the building or putting more material into it. It, it, but it, like you said, it also gives that wow factor exactly. when, someone, when exactly. someone looks at it. So what was the most uh, fulfilling part of being a part of this particular project? Oh, the fact that I um, have been living in Shanghai uh, for the last five years while it's been under construction. Usually I don't get to do that. Usually we design something uh, like the Burj Khalifa. We designed it, and then in 2006 the construction went full, and I didn't get to visit it during construction as much as I wanted to. It's like, you know, being around for your child's education. You want to be there to help them to get better. In Shanghai, the client wanted me to stay there, so we've been working on this one job for eight and a half years. Wow. wow. And it, uh, I think we will be able to move in in June, and um, it, it's just a wonderful project. Marshall, before we let you go, what about like earthquakes, natural disasters like that? How will the building hold up? Well, it's kind of funny. The taller your building gets, the more earthquakes are less of a problem really? and more wind is a problem. So the wind forces will govern a tall building as opposed to earthquake. Just because the building weighs so much, it 
the earthquake has less impact on the structure. We test for it, we make sure we're safe for an earthquake, so that's not an issue. Okay. In Shanghai, it's not a high seismic zone. In yeah. Taiwan, very high seismic zone. San Francisco, high seismic zone. Shanghai, not so high. But in Shanghai, we get typhoon winds, which is a large spinning wind that causes most of our problems. Yeah. Well, Marshall, I think it is so great that you stopped by to tell us about this oh. new building. It's really kind of an honor for us to have you on, so thank you. Oh, no, Tucson is great. We <laughs> seem to be coming back more and more to Tucson. Oh, uh, well, come back anytime. And okay. To learn more about Marshall Strabley, you can log on to flickr.com slash architectural slash design.